Okay, so welcome everybody. So we are starting today a new uh, series uh, about uh, business and Torah. So maybe first I will introduce myself and uh, we'll talk about uh, why business and Torah. Uh, so, so my name is uh, Yaakov Cohen. Um, I am a student at Talmud of uh, Rabbi Ginsburg for the past 20 years. And uh, I am a high tech entrepreneur and a CEO of a software company. And uh, I've been with uh, the help of uh, Rabbi Ginsburg uh, trying to connect uh, mundane and holy, trying to connect business and Torah and really doing it in two ways. One, uh, I feel that uh, the Torah the Hasidut, the Hasidut and uh, the Torah in general, and in particular, the way uh, Rabbi Ginsburg is teaching, is helping me uh, run a business. It's really helping me better understand people, better understand situations, better understand uh, myself, my feelings, and eventually also make better decisions. Um, and, uh, and really I had the difficult situation in business and which I uh, thank God I've been able to turn around. I think a lot of that has to do uh, with uh, the understanding of Torah. Now, another way also to look at it, which is maybe even less obvious is that I, I feel that uh, by being in the in the business world and by um, tackling complex situations with people you know firing people hiring people with the ups and downs of the business uh, this has helped me strengthen my emuna my faith and better also understand the text of torah i feel like this is really talking about situation that I've been facing. So there is a two-way contribution from uh, the Torah contributing to the business understanding, but also uh, the, life, the, the life of uh, a businessman traveling around the world, meeting a lot of different people have been helping me when I eventually uh, land and get to uh, learn Torah, even simple things like opening the Chumash it's talking about what I've been living during the week. Um, so that's kind of a, a first introduction uh, about this. I live also, I live in Batayn in Israel, just moved to Batayn. I was before that uh, 25 years in, in North Ayalon. Um, and uh, I, live, I am from France, so, so you understand the accent. Uh, but I lived in the U.S. as part of my uh, business uh, for uh, about uh, six years. Um, so the other thing is really to to get into the subject of business and Torah. You know why business and Torah? This is not related. Do we need to relate between the two? I discover one day, I discover one day that the uh, Ayom uh, Yom uh, of the seventh of Tishri, you know, Ayom Yom is a book with uh, a, a nice uh, statement for every day of the year. And this one was, Bechol Darkecha Da'eu, in all your ways know him, which means really you need, you need to know Hashem from every experience you are going for in life. And then he goes on and say, a person would set his heart and mind to observe all that happens to him and around him will, perce will perceive elokut, godliness, tangibly in evidence. As the Mittler Rebbe pointed out, businessmen have, a, have an advantage over secluded callers, over, over Talmide Chachamim in that, that the business mask can actually witness the, 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 the manifestation of God, God himself. 
So this is, you know, quite shocking to see here the statement which is saying, actually, if you are dealing with business, and if you have um, an approach of business which is avodat uh, Hashem, working keeping Hashem, so actually you're going to be able to know Hashem better than the people which are secluded from the world and which are learning Torah uh, in full. So this is a very different approach. Um, I remember living in uh, Shalabim all these years, uh, which is uh, like a Litvakit, a, a wonderful community of very uh, observant people. People were looking at me saying, you know, wow, poor man, you're traveling so much, you're very much uh, busy with uh, all this stuff of high tech and software. And we see that you like Torah. So you really, you are in a poor situation. I wish you to be able to learn Torah full time. And then when I met Rabbi Ginsburg for the first time, that was uh, 22 years ago, he said, wow, you actually are doing something very special because you are bringing godliness to the mundane world. And I even remember one day when I said, listen, I want to give up. I'm tired of all this. I want to study. He actually said, you need to continue in your shlichut, uh, in your uh, mission of doing business. And obviously to do it uh, the Jewish way with faith and with honesty. And, uh, I, I, and I, and I, really was a, a big uh, innovation for me. It was uh, really, I could say that this, this uh, Ayom Yom and the teaching of uh, Rabbi Ginsburg have been really uh, life-shaping. Last point on that is the seven of Tishri happened to be my birthday. So then I understood that everything happened for a reason. And uh, I was born on seventh of Tishri. So that's just an uh, introduction. I don't know, Eliezer, if we want to ask, uh, anybody wants to ask question, I'm very comfortable with question, or I don't know the protocol. I don't know if you can, uh, if everybody is muted. Yeah, it looks like everybody is muted. Okay, so Eliezer, maybe. Okay, so let's keep going. So that was just to introduce this uh, series. So hopefully we learn about business and Torah. We look at different, different aspects uh, of this. Um, and I will share with you also uh, where I put some of the articles that I've been writing on this topic. Uh, okay. So what I would like to do now is to really take a look at uh, one uh, particular event, which is the crossing of the Red Sea. And, uh, and from this very... Uh, peculiar situation and uh, the situation of distress when we, it seems like there is no solution, analyze the behavior and uh, the four different uh, parties in the Jewish people and their opinion about what we should do in a situation like that. And from there, I want to try to understand how do we make decision and how can we, and can face an emuna bitachon, we'll talk about these two concepts, how can um, trust in Hashem can help us make better decisions? So really improving um, our, our decision process. You know, when you look at it initially, you say, okay, people understand faith or emuna as something which is irrational something which actually people which are committed to Torah, committed to any religion, they're gonna make bad decisions because they are not pragmatic, they don't look at reality. So that's kind of the way people think about that. And I would like to try to show actually the opposite. If we use the right way 
are, uh, are emuna, our faith and the, our trust in Hashem. And we look at emuna as a, as a resource, uh, as a, like um, the same way I think the Rebbe said, you know, you have the emotional intelligence, you have analytical intelligence, and then you had a first, a third strength, which is emuna. Emuna is a strength, and in Hebrew, emuna and imun, faith is from the same root of uh, training. So it's like training a muscle. You need to train the muscle of emuna, the muscle of faith, or more acutely, the muscle of bitachon, trust in Hashem. So let's take a look. So here we are in a situation where Okay, this is all when no, the Bnei Israel are escaping, are going out of Egypt and they are marching out triumphantly. But then all of a sudden, the Egyptians are coming after them. And they see Paro cavalry and his chariots, his horsemen, all the power of power all of a sudden that they saw they are done with is all of a sudden coming back on them. The, and then power drew near, and the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And what do they see? They see Mitzrayim no Acharem, they see Egypt, the entire Egypt. Although there were only 600 um, um, horsemen, nevertheless, from their subjective view, this was like the entire Egyptian power. Nosea is advancing toward them, and they were very frightened. And they, they cried out to Hashem. What can you do in this situation? You know, it seems to be the right behavior. Let's just uh, dive in, let's pray, let's cry out to Hashem. But then it wasn't enough. They went to Moses, Moshe, and they said, listen, there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us to die in the desert. What is, what is this? What are you doing? Why have you done to us by taking us out of Egypt? You know, you can hear a tachutzpa of the of the Israelis, the Israeli chutzpah here, that uh, really saying no respect to Moshe. And then they say, listen, this is what we have spoke to you in Egypt. We told you, leave us alone. Leave us alone, and we will serve the Egyptians. Because we would rather serve the Egyptians then die in the, in the desert. So, okay, hold on. This, somebody is knocking on my door. Sorry for that. So this is what we talked to you about. We would have rather stay in Egypt. And then Mo Mo Moshe is keeping his calm and he's saying, don't be afraid. Stand firm and see Hashem's salvation. And that he will wreck for you today. He will, uh, uh, he will save you today. For the way you have seen the Egyptian, you shall no longer continue to see them for eternity. Hashem will fight for you and you can, you can remain silent. And then Hashem said something quite amazing. He's telling Moshe, why do you cry out to me? Why are you even davening to me, praying to me? Speak to the children of Israel and let them travel. Just keep moving on. Just keep moving on. This is Hashem's world. So how do we understand this? 
So actually in the Talmud, the Talmud identifies four different opinions, four different um, opinions within uh, the people of Israel. And each of them had a different way to look at the situation and a different way to propose a solution, a different solution to propose. One, one uh, party said, let's surrender to the Egyptians and let's go back to Egypt. You know, enough is enough, like we see in the text. We were okay in Egypt, let's just go back there. Um, then another party said, you know, just, let's just let it go. Let it go, let's just fall into the sea, passively fall into the sea and finish with all that. So kind of committing a suicide. And then a third party said, um, let's pray to Hashem, let's dive into Hashem and ask Hashem to destroy them. He's the only one which can help. And the fourth one was let fight the Egyptian. Let's uh, give, give a fight. And, and actually we know that none of this behavior was actually the right behavior. And actually if this is all coming from the verses, when the Moshe is saying, Moshe is saying, Al tirau, itiatzu. Shh, uh, When Moshe is saying, Al tirau, itiatzu, uruet Yeshua Tashem, he's saying, stand firm and see Hashem salvation, as this is telling to the people which wanted to fall into the sea. And when he says, Ki asher ra'item et mitzrayim ayom, lo tosifu lirotam ad olam, what you have seen the Egyptian today, you won't see them anymore. This is what he's telling to the one which, uh, which want to go back and work back, is a work be slave to the Egyptian. And when he's saying, Reu et Yeshua Tashem, he's telling that to uh, the one which are, which are saying, uh, Let's daven, let's daven to Hashem. And when he's telling, no, and then when he's saying, when he's saying here, Hashem uh, lachem, he's telling to the one which wanted to fight the Egyptian. And when he's saying, Batem tachishun, he's telling to the one which are davening. He's saying, tachishun, which is remain silent, remain silent. And this is saying to, uh, to the one which are saying, which want to daven to Hashem, which want to pray to Hashem, he's saying, no, no, it's not time for prayer. Don't pray. So basically what uh, we see here is that we have four behavior, which are all coming from the psukim or from the verses. And we have, four of them have uh, some uh, rational and but eventually this is not what has to be done. And we need to analyze what are these four behaviors. When you, basically what the Torah is describing here is not describing just historical facts. The Torah is giving us a model of a thought model, how to behave when you confront a threat, a challenge. And when you get something totally unexpected, this wasn't in your plan. You know, your biggest customer has left you. Your business partner is gone or has actually uh, um, to call the money and run. You are in a situation of, of threat, existential threat, where you're gonna you are, your entire identity, your entire identity is a threat. So in this type of situation, the, the, the Torah and the Talmud are telling us there are four behavior, which are typical behavior. One is to, to surrender, to go back to, the, to Egypt, to say, you know what? 
I going to do what what the mainstream thinking is saying? You know, the Egyptians are stronger. We told you, Moshe, uh, Moses, we told you we should have stayed there. They are strong. They are powerful. They are, the, they are a superpower. They call the shots. They have a veto at the UN. Why messing with these guys? Let's just go back. This is, you know, this is some rational into this. It's sticking to mainstream thinking. You know, not, not to confront, not to challenge reality, to go with reality. The second one is despair, to fall into the, the sea is really despair, giving up. You know, what can I do? I have nothing I can do. I'm just going to get into the sea. And the one to fight, you know, we, a lot of the people, you know, from the right wing, they would say, yeah, let's fight. Let's, let's win. Hashem is with us. Let's win the war. But actually, it's ignoring the balance of power. Indeed, Egypt is a superpower. You cannot open war with Egypt and win. This is about ignoring reality and, and adopting an irrational behavior. You could have said, well, this would have been actually trusting Hashem. Trusting Hashem to go and fight and to, to really trust Hashem that he will get us into the land. And actually, no, this is, the Torah is saying this is not the right way. This is not what you should do in this situation. You need to take into account the balance of power. You need to trust Hashem but you need to also, as we have seen here, you know, when the business people which are seeing the, the glory of the Lord, the, the uh, elokut mamash, atzmut elokut, the manifestation of holiness, they need to observe with art and mind, all the art and all the mind, to observe all what happened to him and, and around him. So we need to look at reality. We need to perceive reality. We need to understand the data and the balance of power. And we can't just say, you know, trusting God is not ignoring reality. And then you have the people which said, we're going to dive into Hashem. And this makes a lot of sense. You know, you are in a situation of despair. Why we want to, to pray to Hashem. This is actually uh, the right behavior. But Hashem himself said, if you remember, Hashem said, Mati Tzakelai, why are you praying right now? Daber el Bnei Israel vaisau. All you need to do, talk to the Bnei Israel and add them to keep moving on. So obviously Hashem didn't want the prayer, the prayer here. So why? Why? Because they, when there is a risk or there is a danger when you pray because you stop thinking and you, you stop taking responsibility on reality. You may be very firm, very religious and observant. Nevertheless, you need to take responsibility on, on, on uh, your world, on your kids, on your employees, on everyone. Uh, Rabbi Ginsburg said, everyone is a king in a, in a certain way, at home, at work, in the community. You need to be in charge. And when you say, I'm going to dive in Hashem, I'm not going to do anything. VC is saying, I'm not in charge. Somebody is in charge. My boss is in charge. I don't know. It's not up to me to solve the solution. I don't have a solution. It's my boss. It's the government. It's a company. It's God. I don't. So this is actually these four behaviors, although, and, and the rabbi is saying in one of the, the Ferbrungen, he's saying that each of these a, a behavior has some good thing about it. The one which wanted to go back to Egypt, they actually wanted to convince or to, to they were hoping that ultimately the Egyptian will become will go the right way. 
and there's is but that that was not uh, the right thing to do uh the one which were davening obviously is had a good intention if they daven and they, they are one with hashem so hashem will take care of reality and the one which wanted to fight they wanted to eradicate evil from this world they wanted to eradicate uh, mitzrayim so each of them each of them uh, add and and the one going into the sea were doing mesirut nefesh which they were ready to give their life and not to to um, to uh, ignore Hashem, uh, Hashem uh, commandment to get out of Egypt and to go to the to take, get the Torah so they said you know we're not going to go back we're going to we so each of them had their own rational nevertheless this wasn't the right rational so what what can we learn from this? So even uh, this is also in uh, when there is a threat and when we analyze the way our body and where our animals are responding to threat, actually we see here the same pattern that we see uh, when an animal responds to threat. There are three behavior: fly, uh, uh, fly fright and freeze so to to fly it's to escape to run away it's giving up going to the sea falling into the sea it's like escaping reality trying to be in the sea to be in a world of quiet it's really flying and um, to go back to egypt is to go back to the initial situation uh, where uh, we were slaves in Egypt, and this is actually like freezing. And obviously making war and ignoring the balance of power and engaging in a war with uh, the Egyptian is, uh, is fight. The one which doesn't appear here is really davening to Hashem, which is not an animal behavior. This is not something which uh, can be modeled in a, just by looking at uh, animal. So we can also, if you look at uh, the Tanya, the Tanya in the first chapter is talking about the four bark, the four clipot. In when we look at this at an individual level, why do we freeze? Why do we surrender? And it's because there the, the Balatanya is talking about the four clipot. One is earth. You know, the four clipot are coming from earth, water, fire, and wind. Earth is like dust. It's like very heavy. I don't have any strength. I don't have any ability, power. So I, I, am, I am freezing. So there is something in us well, we, we, we don't have, we, we don't have koach, we only koach. I don't have any strength to fight reality. I just want to freeze. And this is coming from some sort of laziness. We have some inherent laziness within us. And it's very natural, it's very common. We just need to be aware of that, that we feel we don't have koach, but every day we are saying, I know ten layaf koach. Hashem is giving us koach. Um, the other thing is uh, when we fly, this is, this is really the, um, this is really to the despair. It's like, it's like just flowing with the water. It has to do, the water is also all the tanugot, all the pleasure, like eating and, so, you know, I just want to raise the thread. I'm just getting into the sea. I'm just having, uh, trying to escape. I don't want to, to have anything which is painful. And I don't want to have really um, uh, to tackle and to, to fight. And then fire is a fight. You know, it's a chaos, it's a anger, and uh, being pound, gava. It's fire, so I fight and I ignore, you know, a lot of time you see folks which are 
ready to make any fight. Every time they see um, an obstacle, rather than trying to find a, a solution which is good for both, they want to fight. So this is coming from Gava, from anger, and being the ego, from our ego. And then when you, sometimes when you dive in, it's just, it's, it's just like a wind. You know, it's some sort of frivol, frivol, frivolity of, and talking uh, idle talk. It's, uh, you know, I'm not in charge. I don't want to really be part of that. The boss, you know, it's like Lashonara talking about the boss. There is a davening which is not really sticking to Hashem, but it's a way of the responsible to not to taking responsibility, the responsibilizing ourselves. So that's just to see all this behavior. So what what happened? You, we know all the end of that. Nachshon went into the sea, but he didn't fall into the sea. What happened is Nachshon went one step into the sea. Nachshon said, when Nachshon was just, he kept moving on, exactly as Hashem said. So basically, Nachshon made one step into the sea. Okay, he got wet. And he was, he was cold, you know, Pesach at night. I, I think it was night. Maybe it's a little cold in the desert. But okay, he could do it. And then he said, he got one step closer to the land of Israel. And that's where Hashem said they're gonna, he's going to take them. Then he saw that he could make a second step and a third step until really the water come up to his nose. And at that time, the, the Hashem parted the sea and the rest is his story. So what different in the behavior of Nachshon? Please close the door. Close. What's the difference between the behavior of Nachshon versus the behavior of the, the four parties? If we really are trying to think about it, Nachshon didn't, for everybody, nobody saw a solution. But the four parties were trying to find a complete solution. They wanted a solution. And Nachshon said, listen, I don't see a solution in this situation. In this complex situation, when something significant happened to you, some significant crisis happened to you in your life, in your business life, in your personal life, the, you don't see any situation, you don't see any solution. And that's where faith or bitachon, a trust in Hashem can help you. Hashem said, you know clearly that the direction is in this way, I don't see the full solution, but I know one thing. If I do one step in this direction, I'm getting a little closer to my goal. So when that was the difference between Nachshon and the other parties, Nachshon had the humility, the humility, humility to say, I know that I don't know. I know that I don't have all the answers. I know that I only understand a very small part of reality. I know my status as a human being. As a human being, we're all limited. We see only one piece of the puzzle. We, we don't have all the answers. And because of that, Nachshon was empowered to do what was in his power. I have the power to make one baby step towards the solution. I can, I can get one step into the, the water, into the sea. And then I can do another step. And then I can do another step. So, and then what happened? Because he has trust in Hashem that if he will do his part, he doesn't, he, in one end, you know, this is exactly having a good uh, weight in Midot. In one end, he had bit trust in Hashem, positive trust, what uh, Rabbi Ginsburg called bitachon pa'il, active trust in Hashem. He was doing everything he could do in his power. On the other hand, he understood that not everything was in his power. That's hod. He knew that Hashem 
He knew that Hashem was in charge, but he knew that he had to do his own part. And that's what enabled Nachshon to eventually save the entire Jewish people. And that's what Hashem was expecting. You just need to keep moving on. Do your part, one step and another step and another step. And then eventually Hashem is doing his part. So that's, I think, how trust in Hashem, in one hand, empower us to act, rather than pushing us to passivity, passivity of freeze and surrendering to reality, or passivity of davening, or passivity of despair and falling into water, or Overactivity, thinking I can beat the Egyptian. I can beat this superpower because I know Hashem is with me. I put Hashem in my pocket. A lot of time we think because we are uh, observant, because we are from that team. So Hashem is with us. Hashem wants us to deal with reality. Hashem is not in our pocket. Hashem wants us to tackle reality, to address reality with the knowledge that we're only human beings and with the trust that Hashem will do what's right. And that's this balance between Netzach and Hod, between what uh, Rabbi Ginsburg called a um, uh, bitachon pa'il, proactive trust in Hashem, when I do ishtadlut, I do everything which is in my power. And in business, you need to work really hard. But you know what, at some point, we call it to be, to be actively waiting. You did everything to win a deal. You set up everything, you did the, you demoed the product, you went, you show, you explain, but then you need to respect that the customer will make his decision. He's looking at competitors and over acting at that time and reaching out to the customer at that time is wrong. It means you don't respect that he needs to make his own decision. So having this balance between what is in my power to do versus what I trust Hashem and I trust that whatever Hashem and I have emuna, that's where the difference between trust in Hashem and emuna in Hashem. So there is a passive trust also saying, okay, now, hod, I am, I, I understand, I accept that I don't have all the answer. I understand that I don't understand. And then I have this ability to say, okay, now I'm balanced in one end, like Nachshon, I'm doing everything I can, which is in my power. But I know at every step that that doesn't, I don't know that we're going to win. I don't know that we're going to be saved. But my role, my mission is to do what is in, in my power. And then, I, uh, then uh, after you have done everything, then it's the right time to daven, to be passive, which what uh, Rabbi Ginsburg called bitachon savil, passive trust in Hashem, passive trust in Hashem. So this is a balance we need to achieve in life, in business, I think it's very strong in business when we have this type of situation. So maybe we will, uh, I don't know, Eliezer, if you hear me, and hopefully we can take some questions and I'll share with you. Or you can type questions in the, I don't know, we can do the, let's see, in the chat, yeah, I see the chat. You can type in the chat a question or Eliezer, maybe you can unmute. Maybe Eliezer is not on. I don't know that I can unmute anybody. Can I unmute people? No, I can't uh, unmute, but you can maybe, I will read the question in the, in the chat window. I have the chat window. So please. And uh, Shalom uh, Dora, nice to see you here. And shalom to everybody else. It's nice to see uh, that a lot of people are interested in these things. 
Thank you, Pamela, for the thank you. Um, so a couple of things while you tap your questions, I suggest, and I will put that in the, I have a, I have a blog that I just started. Rabbi Ginsburg asked me to write in English on this particular subject. So um, if I go here, let's see if I go here. So on Medium, I have a blog. I will give you the link. Yeah. Stories, stories. Okay. Stories, there it is. Okay, so I will send you the link here. You have, can face help you make better decision. You have a summary of this, what we discussed today. I will put it in the chat window. Ken, if you can, Ken, lift your microphone. Ken. You have it in the chat window. You can go there. There are free articles right now. I'm gonna be adding. If you can uh, like it and you can, uh, this way, more, the more you uh, react about it, the more people uh, will see it because Medium will promote it. Okay, so yes, please unmute. And uh, if you want to ask any question, please. We can't unmute. Eliezer, can you unmute? Aim at a hall, lift Ah, okay, Moule. As you, so you have to unmute in your uh, in your screen. Okay, you have the icon with the yeah. microphone. Yes, please. We speaking, please. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, please, Toby. Please. Okay, because uh, all right, uh, you were talking about um, when a person feels that they don't want to fight or they can't fight, um, and you said it was a type of laziness, and I just want to, um, I guess, contest that because I mean I understand that there is laziness when a person doesn't want to make an effort, but. Sometimes people feel that they can't fight anymore because they fought and they fought and they have defeated so many times that they just can't, they feel like there's, there's no point or they just can't anymore. So I just wanted to, you know, <laughs> contribute that because um, I don't feel it's fair always yeah. to see that. So, so, yeah, yeah, Toby, maybe uh, this is a very good point and thank you for a uh... So I think you, you're right. There are situations where uh, we feel really that, uh, and I think it's, uh, it's legitimate to feel that we have done everything we can and we don't have any more uh, strength or to uh, fight anymore. Um, so this is not, I didn't mean to say this is laziness. This, has to, this is, but nevertheless, even when we are, in a difficult situation, we need to look if there is something we still can do that we didn't try. Maybe there is something we can do. And it doesn't mean it's easy. Listen, I'm not saying it's easy. And you may, you may need help from somebody else. But you need not to let um, this, uh, you know, it's like a weight. You feel you have a weight. So this is what I meant when I talked about Earth, where we which can lead eventually to laziness. But this is, in this case, you're right. This is not at all laziness. But this is like this feeling that I, I can't move things. You know, things are too heavy. Uh, so, you know, I don't have all the answers. But I think even in a this situation like that, you have tried a lot of things. So maybe there's something else you need to. Maybe you need to get advice from somebody which is going to open up a new way of looking at this. You need to look for your narshan, right? So these behaviors are not negative behavior. These are human behaviors. I took the extreme by saying where they come from. To identify them and to fight them, we need to say where they are coming from. And I'm suggesting, and it's only a suggestion, the four, the four clipot, 
earth, wind, fire, and water are the sources of these behaviors. So, it, but it's only to help us surmount them. And it doesn't mean you're not doing everything you can, but maybe there is something else you need to think about. So I hope this helps. Okay, thank you. thank you, Toby, for asking. I appreciate it. Yes. Who else, Dora, please? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it would be difficult for me in English. Uh, oh, say it in French, I will translate. Um, <laughs> you can ask in French, I will translate. Okay. Uh, uh, je pense qu'il y, y a des périodes dans la vie où effectivement tu ne peux pas lutter, euh, bah, tu l'acceptes, et, et, mais au bout d'un moment, je pense que Emouna d'ailleurs doit aider, euh, tu cherches des solutions. Mais il y a un moment où euh, au début tu, tu ne peux qu'être accompagné et, et si je veux, bon. Parce que les gens te, te raisonnent, etc. Mais ça ne sert à rien. Il y a un moment où uh -huh. tu es sous l'eau et c'est comme ça. Et il faut l'accepter. Et puis après, tu, tu te relèves. Euh, yeah, euh, yeah. So let me maybe translate. Oui, oui. Ouais. Yeah, thank you, Dora. So Dora is also going in your line, Toby. She's saying, you know, there are situations where, which are very difficult. And we're all uh, facing in our life some very difficult situations. And, uh, and and there is a time where you, yeah you are you are you don't you are you don't you are desperate you, you don't have any solution and you can't be proactive and you need just to let it go to just feel the pain and you know like in a shiva why we have shiva is really to uh, to be able to internalize the pain and absolutely this is maybe this is not what we we talking about here we're more talking about situation when you are unexpected maybe in business situation when you are talking about like a, a close person which is passing away or an handicap obviously it's different here we are looking at a situation where you have unexpected events and obviously when you have a pain you need to give time for to feel the pain to internalize the pain to That's the process of mourning. So here, this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about in a situation like in business where there is no time. You need to do something. If you don't do anything, the power of cavalry will actually kill you. So what do you do this or in business? You know, you need to respond in politics. There is an event. You, you, you can't do any, nothing. Doing nothing like the one uh, which uh, were passive, falling into the sea or davening, um, they made a choice. They made a choice and, and, and the choice will have its implications. So we're talking about this type of situation. I think both Toby and Dora, you're talking about different situation of, of pain and, And there is no, this is, we, that's where we are talking here more in business situations where you need to act. When there is, why Hashem is saying, Mati Tzakelai, why are you crying out to me? It's a time of action. You know, the Midrash is saying, Banai, Hashem is going and telling Moshe, why are you davening? Why are you praying now? This is not time for prayer. This is time for action. That's the situation we are talking about. But you know, when, Aaron, uh, when the son of Aaron passed away, okay, so there's this such Shiva, it was not a time of action. It was a time of silence. It was a time of reflection. It was a time of sorrow, of mourning. Absolutely. So this is, well, thank you for making that clear, Doha. Another thing is a granularity of, um, uh, of your acting. At kama ni tsricha le aziz dvarim. Yeah, when, when is the limit between, what is the limit yeah. between ishtadlut, you know, proactiveness, mm -hmm. and when I'm done with my actions, And now, uh, so, and now I need just to pray. 
So Rabbi yeah. Ginsburg has a wonderful uh, series of 25 uh, lectures about Emunah Vebitachon, which is basically the, just the framework is that we have, we have two types, like we have two legs, we have two ways to make progress. One is Netzach, Nitzachon, victory, which means really proactiveness, being proactive. You want, you want a raise. You think you deserve this raise. So, so you're gonna go to your boss, you're gonna talk to the circle of influence. You're gonna do everything you can. You're gonna write. But there is a point where there's nothing to do. Now they need to make a decision. So then at that time, you need to recognize that you need to stop acting, stop being proactive. There is also hod. This is called uh, trust in Hashem, but a, a passive trust in Hashem, where you say, okay, now I'm, now I, I'm, I'm letting it go. Hashem will do, it's like there is a, in the Mishnah, it's written, it's not you to complete the mission. It's not you to complete the mission, but you cannot be freed of, of uh, trying and doing your best. So that's the balance. That's a very difficult balance because there is a paradox. And some people which are very religious, they become very passive. If you look at the, the, the Muslim, for example, Maktub, they believe, you know, God drive everything. I do nothing. I just play with the pearls, you know, Maktub. And then you have a, the Occidental a thinking that man, mankind can fix everything. If there is a, he, he, and we have seen, you know, with recent events like the corona that we don't have everything in our hands. So you need this balance and this, be able to have these paradoxal thoughts, which is in one hand proactiveness with the granularity, as you said, and then on the other hand, to know that I don't know, to know that not everything is in my power. And, and sometimes secular people are only proactive non-religious people, and religious people are more tend to perceive and say Hashem. But actually Hashem expect us to be proactive. Hashem has hidden himself, Tzimtzum, to let humankind and the Jewish people in particular to take action, to make the world a better place. So, but nevertheless, we need to remember that we don't have all the answers. 